afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is a question which I'm asking on behalf of Cambridge past, present and future about future bus services. The City Deal is obviously seeking to progress its plans for the West of Orbital, Campbell route and a number of other express bus, bus links. Yet little thought seems to have been given, at least as far as we're aware, to the delivery of bus services that are actually expected to run <coughs> on these new bus lanes. The bus services bill is currently passing through Parliament. Its purpose is to strengthen arrangements of park for partnership working at the local level uh, and introduce new franchising powers with decision making at the local level. The bill makes provision for the existing quality partnerships to be made more attractive uh, through the provision of enhanced partnerships, enabling local authorities to work with bus operators in setting routes, frequency of services and ticketing. So my first question is, what arrangements are the City Deal and the County Council putting in place with the bus operators to create enhanced partnerships? An opportunity to generate effective partnerships will be provided through the devolution package, which will be years ahead, where responsibility for strategic decision making for local public transport will be devolved to the new, the new map. So my second question is, does the County Council have plans to control bus services post-devolution under some form of franchise model? It is Cambridge PDF's opinion that there is no clear and broad agreement as to what a high quality bus service for Cambridge actually involves. We believe that an envisaging exercise should be undertaken as soon as possible, including both the operators and passengers, to determine what a bus, better bus service might comprise. We can then use the outcomes of this exercise to inform an enhanced bus partnership with the operators. So my final question is, will the City Deal please instruct the County Council to carry out such an envisaging exercise? Thank you. Thank you. So I will ask um, Bob Minnis to respond. Robin, can you turn the mic off, please? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's, it's worth uh, pointing out we have a number of quality partnerships in place already with bus operators, one for the city centre and one for the busway. And very similar questions were being asked about the Gaudi busway. We have bus services on it way back in 2004 2005. We put in place a new for a minimum level of service, which was exceeded within days of the busway opening. Um, so there's a pattern there already. In terms of specific questions, as Robin points out, the buses bill is going through Parliament at the moment. It has been subject to a number of changes as it's gone through, and it may potentially be subject to more changes. So we don't actually have the legislation yet around what these enhanced partnerships will be. I'm sure it will be very interesting when we do see that. But at the moment, it is a wait and see position on the buses bill. In terms of a uh, potential franchising model, that would actually be a matter for the combined authority, not for the county council. The uh, draft agreement on that actually effectively transfers those powers to the combined authority. The draft dilution agreement transfers those powers to the combined authority. It's not the county. So again, the council has no current plans to answer the questions that literally set out. That's not to say that what the combined authority may or may not choose to do. I have no sight of that. It doesn't exist yet. Um, I think the final question, we are actually doing work in which specific projects uh, on envisaging what the bus service pattern may be. Um, uh, I think we would be happy to see the board for the appropriate to go that exercise out into a minor exercise. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mingus. Um, Councillor Birkin. So, I mean, Bob's answered your specific questions, but I think if you stand back from what you're sort of saying, which is should we be working closer with the bus operators, I think the basic answer is yes. I think we work pretty closely with them and pretty well, but it is something pretty important. I mean, you know, one of the key jobs of the city here is to improve, among other things, public transport and bus transport, and I'm pretty keen on that, and yes, we should work with them. So, you know, you've had the sort of narrow legal argument and answers on process through Parliament and things, but standing back, 
yes, we should and we should continue to work in harmony with all of our operators. Um, as the uh, member of the board who's also involved in the combined authority, we have discussed the potential use of franchising and the government has also indicated that it is expecting to give powers to combined authorities that may not be available to counties that don't have them. But until we've got the detail, we're just not in a position to uh, take it forward. Clearly, both Cambridge, Greater Cambridge and Peterborough have significant levels of bus services and much of the rest of the county has very little. So there, there's, there's a, a county-wide set of issues but we would expect that the powers, as has been said, will be, if, if we get them, which we want them, uh, would be exercised through the combined authority. And there is an appetite to, to um, vote from the City Guild Board and from the combined authority to use them. It's the legislation has so far, I think, taken over two years already. Yeah, that's the debate. I think the only thing to add actually is I have an appetite for it as well. So we, we, we agree with you that it, it is a, a significant opportunity to have a uh, proper relationship. <coughs> and were we in a position to have more funds for bus services, then we clearly would want to be able to use that. May I make a very specific I, mean, I know what Bob says on the third question. I think it would be very good if the debate going on about what comprises the quality of bus services at the moment the operators could be expanded to include the public who are expected to use these services. At the moment there seems ambiguity as to what is the priority, whether it is speed to get from A to B, whether it's the reliability of the timetable, whether it's the cost of the ticket. I think that you have to discuss this with uh, representatives from the public who are the passengers and broaden that debate so we can have clarity as to what constitutes a better bus service. And I take that point and I, and I think um, we've had discussions which will also filter into the discussion about congestion, that one of the sets of people in the community that doesn't really get much of a voice, uh, whether it's with the bus operators or more generally as bus passengers. So thank you for your question. Um, question four, and Penny Heath is asking this on behalf of Edward Lee. Thank you. Communications, but also 
working on uh, in support of particular projects, but, but we recognise that that can be strengthened. So one of the areas that we plan to strengthen is in the whole digital um, and media strategy. So a, a post has recently been advertised for a, a digital media officer. Um, uh, as you might see, we're starting increasingly to use digital channels, film, and potentially video animation. And we recognise that as we do increase the resource, we'll be able to support workshops. And we may, for instance, have a workshop on, um, as Mr. Pellier suggested, about well, how do we improve bus services. We're clearly giving a lot of communication support to the local liaison forums, um, including the uh, both the uh, one in relation to Canmore, Cambridge, and also the one that's working tonight on the Milton Road proposals. So we we are expanding the resource, um, um, Mr. Heath, and we uh, also have undertaken the communication survey, and we're encouraging people to respond to that. So there's currently an open communications survey, and we expect that the board will work proposals up because we have a new budget starting from April 2017 and we expect that that will see an expanded amount of uh, communication resources including as has been suggested some further external inputs in, <coughs> in designs and work on, on specific consultations. Yes, uh, Tanya was going to answer. Oh, sorry, it's very hard to see this. I understand that this afternoon officers met with Edward Lee to uh, answer the outstanding questions, the outstanding questions, <coughs> questions from the first and uh, tenth firm. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, just a bit more. I mean, communication is a very difficult context. And certainly for being on the receiving end of the LLF um, in the Western world, I think that just a lot more can be done. It needs more support, more time. And as Pam said, to help Helen and others, that'd be really good. Uh, well, we take the point that we want to assist the LLFs in their communications, as well as your general point and Edward's point, that we can further invest in and improve common communications. Thank you. Um, <coughs> five. Uh, last but not least, um, from Wendy Blythe in relation to Hills Road Cycleway. Um, my question is about the design and implementation of um, Phase 2 of the Hills Road uh, Cycleway scheme because this is City Girl funded. Members of the public are concerned that the Hills Road scheme for only 0.7 kilometres has run well over budget, taken twice as long as anticipated, causing long delays and major inconvenience for almost two years, has been poorly managed and doesn't represent good value for taxpayers' money. There are also major concerns about the design of the scheme itself, relating to both safety and environmental impact. The grass verges which provided a physical barrier between cyclists and other traffic have now largely been removed, and although described as segregated, the new cycleways on Hills Road are not, in fact, separated from other traffic at all. The experimental Cambridge Curve is a small slip specifically designed to allow other vehicles to drive onto the cycle lane. This overrun by other vehicles now happens so frequently on the new cycle lane on Hills Road that white posts have been installed to protect the ceiling troughs between the footpath and the cycleway, but there's no protection for the cyclists. You can see in the foot. The lack of drainage has led to problems with flooding and proximity to other traffic means that cyclists are now more exposed to fumes and air pollution. Giving priority to wide lanes to enable speed and overtaking within the city is not in line with the measures that are considered important in other European cities, such as Amsterdam, which have been successful in achieving the kind of modal shift we want to see in Cambridge. There, it is recognised that while speed and wide lanes are important between towns and villages, within the cities themselves, the priority must be safety for all users, and this means physical separation from other traffic. 
Residents in urban areas who observe the outcome on Hills Road do not see this as a positive model and are now objecting to schemes in other parts of the city since the statute proposed for bringing it way. Now, I'm going to come to my last paragraph. A member-led review group has now been set up to report back in due course. Thanks to Councillor Turns, we understand that there's already been an initial discussion and the first meeting will be in January, not February. But the plans for Phase 2 of Hills Road are already well advanced and pre-construction plans will be on display in January with work due to start in February. There is no information about the expected duration, but the delays in disruption will be considerable as this section includes the junction with Long Road. There have also been questions asked to City Deal Board and Assembly about the need for input from experts in urban and landscape design at an early stage to ensure that the schemes who will deliver these projects have the full range of competencies necessary to deliver good placemaking and sustainable development, as well as functional transport infrastructure. Assurances were given that this would be the case, but the lead officers in Hills Road Phase 2 are the same team. Given the importance of this project for new developments in the city and the level of concern, my question is, can you press for an immediate independent review of the Hills Road scheme as soon as possible so that lessons can be learned and phase two can focus on safety and good design to give more people the confidence to cycle in Cambridge. Residents would also like to be fully consulted on details of the scheme before final plans are drawn up. And I'm speaking on behalf of FECRA and of Jean Glasberg, who's our committee cycling officer. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Nings to start, and then perhaps Councillor Bates wants to add a word or two, and I will as well. Thank you. Um, I think that um, uh, this is, uh, well, both of these points out there at the Uni Committee as well, we've we'll discussed at some length. Uh, they will provide a response to these, these detailed points and provide further written response to them uh, in due course. So I want them all just now. Uh, there's a few key points. There's one is less talking about on the, on the uh, Hills Road scheme, particularly in the way of contractor, which about the scheme and organise the scheme. Uh, that has shown fruit in the Army Road scheme, which was uh, delivered over the week of the programme that was set for it, and overall the Cycle City Ambition programme, which shows a country on the part was actually uh, on budget. Some of the schemes come under budget, some of the schemes come under budget, but it's something that set a very short notice because we were given six weeks to bid uh, for the project by the government. So um, we recognise things went wrong on the road, but we believe that the work actually needs to do right. Um, I think the question for the board is whether they feel there should be a further review. And um, also, the member led review set up uh, by the UD Committee of the County Council, uh, and I will work through it if it's work in due course. But um, we can sanction the, the construction of the Hills Road Phase 2 scheme and City Road scheme. This question for you if you want to carry a further review. Um, perhaps, uh, Councillor Bayes, you can give us some idea also on the timetable for the review to see how we might learn the lessons. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, and thank you for the questions. It, uh, as I'm sure when he's aware of other members, it, it was a matter for some discussion at the mm -hmm. committee, and the decision of the committee, which is cross-party committee, uh, was to actually set up and then the review. Um, they had, uh, had some initial discussions about that. Can I just remind that this is a county-wide review. We deliver cycle projects across the county in all parts of the counties and uh, from the point of view of the e, e Committee, which I am chairman of, the review will encompass all of the counties so there will be projects which will be looked at which will be in other parts of the county, not just in the city and south county. Um, they will be drawn up in terms of reference uh, and, and that has to come back uh, as was agreed at the committee um, in the future and therefore the time scale is already laid down and, and we would hope that um, it will be members to discuss those issues about costs, money, design, environmental issues and, and all other aspects of how we deliver those particular projects in the future and it will come back to the e, &E committee. I'm anticipating that coming back in March. Okay. Um, Okay, so we will look to get those lessons and 
In terms of the uh, Hills Road scheme, including as a resident myself, I will um, be looking out to see when that uh, yeah. outline design comes forward. And yeah, there is our attempt to answer my question. You see, we've got pre-construction pre expeditions in, in January, and the, um, the phase two starts in February. I mean, your your business plan here. I mean, this is a a, a you know a big overspend on phase one, and I've got you know phase two starting in February, and we've been told you know when, when are we getting this? When are we getting the assessment of you know what what wasn't done right? You know, it's too late. If it's starting in January, we haven't had the change of design or the safety concerns that have been raised. You know, okay. it's not good enough. Okay. Well, I, um, Mr. Minions, what's can you remind us what the timetable is for this um, for the Hills Road Two? Is is that the time scale that we're going to see the outline proposals in January? You you already approved the scheme for implementation. Yeah. yeah. So okay. the pre-construction expectation is to inform people about the construction methodology, about any necessary traffic management, temporary traffic management measures during construction, etc. So the information will come out. Sorry. Can, I, Sorry. can I speak, please? Sorry. Um, so the information will come out in January, and then we will we will see it, and obviously we'll listen to residents, including as to whether it should proceed on the time scale that we proposed. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Liz. I'm just I'm not quite understanding. We've been told we're getting pre-construction uh, exhibition plans in January. We haven't, we're not seeing designs, we haven't seen any designs. We've raised safety issues here. There are a number of you know, issues and concerns that actually relate to other schemes coming through the pipeline. You know, and, but you you're know, asking a question which is... And we're told we're starting in February. Okay. Huh? You're asking a question which isn't quite in the question that was submitted and admittedly it was only um, a, a day ago. Um, I'm happy to meet with you and with the city deal officers and we can look at the process that will be adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>